fight! Back in late 1997, I caught something on TV which was a big rarity at the time. It was a commercial for Star Fox 64, or Lilac Wars as it was known here in the UK. It's easy to forget that back then, seeing a game commercial here on TV was somewhat of a big deal, reserved for an elite selection of games which were trusted console sellers, and needed to have some serious muscle behind them to afford the airtime. One of the very few N64 games we ever got commercials for here was indeed this very game. When watching the commercial my mind was blown at just how far the series had come along. I had played the Super Nintendo game to death with my friends, but the technical leap which I was now seeing was warping my fragile little mind. But there was something else about that commercial which captured my imagination, the rumble pack. The commercial was telling me that by plugging this into my controller I would be able to take my gaming to a whole new level. I would feel every blast, become connected with my environment, and be further immersed into my games than ever before. The storyline centres around the evil Dr Andros, a once brilliant scientist who worked for the Canarian army. After going crazy and taking his test too far, he was banished by General Pepper to the barren planet Venom, where it was assumed he would never survive. Five years later, General Pepper has picked up a strange activity coming from the planet and sent the original Star Fox team, led by James McLeod, to investigate. It was there that Pigma betrayed James and Peppy Hare. Peppy managed to escape and return to Corneria to tell the news of James's assumed death to his son Fox McLeod. After years passed, Andros declared war on the Lilac system and his army spread across the galaxy. General Pepper turned to the new Star Fox team, which is where the game picks up. The chief engineer of the team, Slippy Toad, whom had rejoined the team after it was formed by Fox McCloud. Peppy Hare, a survivor from the wars, who is the eldest team member and was a wingman of James McCloud before he was killed. Falco Lombardi was the leader of the Hot Rodders before he left them to join Star Fox and is known for his friendly rivalry with Fox McCloud, the leader of Star Fox and the main character that you play this game as. Star Fox 64 has 15 missions which link together across a number of different paths which all lead to an ultimate battle with Venom. Depending on your performance during each level, you'll be presented with alternative paths throughout the game. Mixing things up in terms of gameplay are some stages which you leave behind the cockpit of your R-Wing behind to jump into either the underwater blue marine vehicle or my personal favourite the Landmaster. With these special vehicles being in the game to mix up the gameplay, it adds a great sense of adventure into the game, and you'll find that you'll use trial and error to figure out the best route to take through the game. It's strange because this was one of the few criticisms against the game by some reviewers of the time. In essence, to complete the game, you only need to complete a handful of levels and kill Andros. Some reviewers said that this made the game feel cheap, but I couldn't disagree more. One of the most compelling parts of Star Fox 64 is that it is just that, a short game to play, but it takes a long time to master. Each play through the game shouldn't take more than an hour or so, but it's with the path you'll take between the start and end of the game that makes it so impressive. With the multiple paths throughout the game, there's an insane amount of replayability. Add to that the high scoring and medal system, it really makes it a game that you'll keep coming back to time and time again. In total, there are 25 different paths you could take through the game to lead you to Venom and with different endings to boot. 14 of the levels lead to the fake Andros boss and the other 11 lead you to the real Andros through Area 6. Whatever path you take, you'll also come into contact with Star Fox's nemesis, Star Wolf. They appear at various points throughout the game at key moments and can lead to some of the most epic dogfights seen in video games ever. As these levels usually have a strict time limit, you have to take a balanced approach towards taking down pilots with protecting your team who seem constantly needing help with opponents on their tails. Whatever route you take through the game it's packed with incredible level design. At times you'll be blasting non-stop at hordes of enemies who will be coming your way, and at other times you'll be weaving your Arwen through obstacles and space debris like in the asteroid belt. The levels generally feel like new worlds, visually look different and reflect the planet's composition. 
Like pretty much every first party Nintendo game, the controls feel perfect, and in the case of Star Fox 64, it feels as if the controller was almost made for the game. The analog stick gives you a free-flowing sense of movement that the Super Nintendo game never had, and add to that the barrel rolls, loops and tight turns that you can now make, and you have one of the best controlling games on the system. For everything the game does right in single player, the multiplayer mode was unfortunately a bit of a letdown. I was hoping that the main campaign and story mode could be played in co-op mode with up to three friends, but instead, all we got was some pretty weak area style dogfights, and in all honesty, it's pretty forgettable, and it's safe to say that nobody remembers Star Fox 64 for its multiplayer mode. The music is also a personal highlight of the game for me. Each and every one of the game's many different stages have their own theme song and rank up there in the upper echelons of Nintendo's work, so it's no surprise to know that the game was scored by Koji Kondo. What may surprise you to know though, was that a third of the game's memory is taken up by audio. The game contains over 700 voice samples, which means that throughout the game the characters are seemingly talking constantly to one another. This even includes Star Wolf, who will taunt you and goad you on when you're fighting them. Of course the game is famous for the many lines of dialogue which are immortalised into gamers' minds everywhere. Do a Barrel is a line which trended worldwide for weeks when Google included it as an easter egg in their search engine, but many people found the voice acting irritating after a while. It was however a vast improvement over the Super Nintendo original, and without being a CD based game it's quite impressive when you consider how much voice work there really is in this game. In another cool twist here in Europe, we had the option to enable the language mode as Lila, which replaced all voice acting with the Lilac gibberish which was found in the Super Nintendo game. On its release in North America, the game sold like crazy, shifting over 300,000 copies on its first week in sale. That is actually more than Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario 64 did in their first week on sale, so it was surprising to see that the game sold considerably less in Japan, where it only managed to push over the 75,000 mark in its first week in sale. Regardless of how well the game sold, it's known as being an instant classic. With a virtual console release and a remake for the Nintendo 3DS, Star Fox 64 in my opinion is the pinnacle of the series. It makes me wonder why, with such a beloved franchise, Nintendo hasn't been pushing the adventures of Star Fox team out more regularly. In the Guinness World Records Gamer Edition of 2009, Star Fox 64 is listed as the 45th greatest game ever made and I want to know your thoughts. Do you consider this to be perhaps one of the greatest N64 titles of all time? Or do you think that this is a game which has been overhyped over the years due to a lack of credible sequels? Do you believe that nostalgia is what keeps this game relevant, or do you think it's because of its perfectly balanced gameplay and awesome presentation? This is a community, so let's kick off the discussion down below in the comments section, and as always thanks for watching, and until next time.